Welcome to In the World of Winooski. I'm your host, Mayor Christine Lott, and joining me today is City Manager Jesse Baker, who has been no stranger to this show over the past four years that she served in her role leading our city staff and operations here in Winooski. Um, Jesse is moving on to the next step in her career, taking on the role of City Manager in South Burlington, and her last day with Winooski will be tomorrow, so we wanted to take some time to celebrate, look back on the past four years, um, and all that we've achieved in our community in that time. So welcome, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Of course. Um, before we dive into what's what we've been achieving over the last few years, I would love to hear about your experience when you first came to this role in Winooski. Um, you know, are there any interesting things you learned or special memories or stories to share? Great, thanks. Um, that's a great question. Um, so I joined the team in um, March of 2017 and actually put in my application for the position in November of 2016. So when I think back on my interest in this position, um, it goes back well before my start date. Um, as folks probably know, I was, I'm a um, Vermont kid. I was the assistant city manager in Montpelier before joining the Winooski team. Um, and I'd always had my eyes on Winooski. You know, I spent some time living in um, New York City and right outside Boston in Somerville, Massachusetts, and really loved um, densely populated urban communities with lots of diversity and um, hearing different languages on the street and having access to different um, restaurants and businesses and things like that. So Winooski was always really appealing to me as the place I might find that in Vermont. Um, when I started, um, I, well, I went through a, a, a really wonderful slash intense interview process with the community. We had a great steering committee at that point, much like you do now, um, that assisted the council in, in uh, my hiring process. Um, so I got to meet um, uh, about eight different community leaders as part of my interview process and just the, the joy they articulated about being Winooski leaders and Winooski residents I was just palpable and I knew I was joining a team um, in a really special place in a place that folks knew each other folks really cared about the future of the community. Uh, folks were ready to welcome new people and grow and try new things and be innovative um, and that was just so intriguing to me. Um, on my, uh, I guess the last phase of my interview process and slash um, Mayor, Mayor Leonard at the time probably viewed it as part of my orientation process. Um, I spent a day with him going around and meeting all of the different departments, uh, staff and all the different departments in the city. And that was um, just so fun and interesting and seeing his connection to the staff, you know, the councils, which you have carried on in your role, Mayor Lott, the, you know, the council's connection to the staff team and, and the orientation between the staff and the council really being on the same team. Um, I think sometimes in communities you see elected officials and staff uh, feeling almost um, at odds with one another. And that really is not the case here in Winooski. It really is um, the elected officials and professional officials of this of the community working together to implement a vision of the community is a really special thing. And I saw that from my interview process forward and um, and really appreciate your leadership to keep that connection going as well. You know, that's a great point you make, Jesse. I, I think maybe not everybody knows exactly what this role is and, and how the leadership functions locally. So we have our um, City Council of elected officials who are here to set the, the kind of policy vision for Winooski. And then the city manager role um, operationalizes that and helps staff carry out that vision. So we're lucky here in Winooski to have um, a pretty comprehensive master plan. Um, perhaps some folks participate in this process, others not, but through a series of public meetings and outreach, we have developed this master plan to guide us for the next you know, seven, eight years on what, what we should be prioritizing, working towards what the vision is for Winooski. And that, when did we approve that? Maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the great things I think that we have achieved over the last few years is really getting that in place along with other like, subsidiary strategic plans. Um, you know, 
having these guiding documents really helps leadership in staff, in the elected officials stay on the same page and also have a vision we can articulate to, to residents so they understand you know, what it is we're working towards. Um, a couple of big thing pieces of that come to mind over the time that, that I've been serving in this role um, alongside you. You know, we obviously we have reconstructed the pool, um, something less visible. We have a capital improvement plan that we can work through. Um, there's been quite a few of these like big projects that we've we've worked on, and I wonder if there's you know one that is is your favorite maybe that you worked on or had the most interesting experience with or. Um, that you think is going to be really important to us in the future. So I'd love to hear your experience on some of these like big projects we've, we've moved forward. Sure, I'd love to talk about that. Can I talk about master planning for just a minute? Yeah, by all means. Um, so I think that this, I, I, I love how you introduced that because it's, um, I think it also tells a story of how, um, how a community changes and adapts and leaders come in and out within a community vision. So when I started, um, the prior to me starting under prior council and uh, Deke DeCaro and Mayor Leonard, um, they had established the strategic vision for the city. And those principles, you know, being focused on housing, economic vitality, municipal infrastructure and safe, healthy, connected people uh, were really the, have become, even though you and I did not create those, those came out of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of community participation, um, through the development of the form-based code and the early conversations around the master plan, um, those have been our core now as a community for about seven or eight years. And you and I have taken those and with staff and with the planning commission and with our commission structures and really built out that master plan and those associated documents. Um, and now we have annual work plans together where we articulate for each other and for the community what we're doing to accomplish those goals. Um, we've had three, in my experience here, we've had three mayors and 11 city councilors who have influenced that process. Um, we've, we will have had three or four city managers who have influenced that process. And I think that's really a testament to the vision of this community and that that vision can um, carry through beyond leaders. It's the, it's the residents who are articulating what they want and we just have the privilege of being able to move those forward. Um, so I think that foundation is really strong. And I think it's something that's really special about Winooski. Um, in terms of favorite projects, you know, I'm sure um, if I don't say the pool, people will be surprised. Um, you know, we've done a lot of really interesting projects. You know, we've done the pool, we've done a lot of repaving, we've put in new sidewalks. We're currently finishing up our Hickok Street project. Uh, we're in final plans for our Main Street revitalization project. Uh, we've done a lot of things. I actually want to talk about the Headworks project, which is probably not the one that most people think of, but from a kind of core municipal services is an incredibly critical, um, critical part uh, of what we do. Our wastewater treatment plan is um, arguably our most expensive asset as a government um, on par with the school building. Um, you know, obviously it is where all of our uh, sewer system and stormwater system ends up and being able to appropriately handle that, treat that in a very small city um, and dispose of the waste and put the um, effluent back into the Winooski River is, is really critical to not only our public safety, but our natural resources safety as well. So forgive me for a minute while I talk about this really wonky municipal thing, um, the Headworks project, um, it was a project we completed uh, last year, um, had a bond vote for in 2018, um, cost about one and a half million dollars. And basically the wastewater, all the wastewater ends up at the treatment plant. And before we did the Headworks project, our staff was taking out all of the non-biodegradable um, non things that came through the wastewater stream, which is quite a bit. So daily, they were shoveling things out of that stream. Um, it was a really arcane system, uh, created some public health challenges for our staff. 
And the Headwork projects really, project really modernized that and automated that process. So um, our staff no longer has to do that by hand. There is a system in place to do it. Um, it's, it can track more um, effectively the flow and what's coming in and out. And really let's make sure that our water and wastewater infrastructure is well maintained. So while it is certainly not a visible project to most, it is actually an incredibly critical modernization that we did um, in the last four years that I think is, is really important and will set up the community well for the future. I'm kind of glad you mentioned that one. I think there, there's a lot of work that happens that is not visible to, to residents. Um, and so it's, I think it's hard to envision like how much happens in our city, like how much stuff staff are doing. You know, um, the pool, Main Street, these are things that people have heard about. They're very, they're very visible, but like the Headworks project, um, the, I'm not gonna use the right terminology, but I know that staff have done some like patch basins and, and various other sort of stormwater treatment, things that are really important to keeping our environment safe mm -hmm. um, that aren't very visible. And a lot of that happens also in, when a street is is redone, a project like Main Street, like there's a lot of components that aren't just about resurfacing and parking, um, but actually like treating our environmental sustainability as a city. And that's, those are sort of things that I think don't often get highlighted. They're not as exciting, but they're really important. Mm -hmm. um, I think similarly, we, I believe, so, I've been serving in this role for a couple of years, but you've, you've been um, city manager longer than when I came onto council. But I believe in that time, we have passed every city budget with pretty strong voter support. And I think that's also something that is not on the surface remarkable, but I know historically hasn't always been the case. So I feel like the, the master plan, public outreach, working together in these leadership roles has put us in a position to, to be able to present something that voters can support that's in line with what residents want. Mm -hmm. um, I think another um, maybe less obvious financial piece is our downtown tax increment financing the TIF district. Um, and you and staff have really done a good job of keeping that financially on track. Um, I wonder if you could speak a little bit to what that has looked like, how you guys have thought about making sure that we, those finances stay, stay in line. Sure. So one of the things, um, I think you are right, going back to the budget approval, um, each budget that um, you and I have worked on and Mayor Lott and Mayor Mace and I worked on together, um, all passed with over, um, I think the lowest approval rate was um, 64 percent um, and topped out at about 73 percent approval rate so that's that's really significant and and shows that um the you know the strong majority of our residents think we're going in the right direction i think that is in part a re i think that's a result of a lot of trust that the council and the staff have built with the community i also think it's a result of council asking really hard questions and and demonstrating to the community that they are holding the staff team accountable. Um, you know, these are dollars that we are taking from our neighbors to provide services. And we really wanna make sure we're doing that um, as effectively and efficiently as possible. And I think the council being very engaged in that process has demonstrated to the community um, that these are budgets that can be supported because they've been really examined by the elected officials and the ele elected officials know what's going on. Um, so again, thank you for that partnership. Um, the tax increment financing district was one of the things that really appealed to me coming to this position. I think it's a really innovative financing tool for municipal governments to um, redevelop significant areas of the town that are not, not just solely on the, on the backs of the current taxpayers, but really um, invest in infrastructure to see that future growth. Um, so just for people who may be watching short one minute on TIFF, um, so basically our downtown, we had 
uh, we established it in around 2000. Um, the property values were frozen at that period of time. Um, those dollars continue to come back to the general fund. And as it's redeveloped and the assessed value of the properties has increased, that difference between what they were assessed at, at the time and the increase, that increment, that difference, is going to pay off the debt that we took on to build the new street structure, to underground the utilities, um, to build the parking garage, um, to build the rotary and the river walk. Um, so that is on track to be fully paid off in 2024. So just a few years from now. Um, and really, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of uh, Deke and the past city managers who put that um, work together. You know, Mike O'Brien, George Cross, um, Jerry Myers, a lot of others who um, did an enormous, Clem Bissnett, who did an enormous amount of work both in Winooski and at the state level to make that happen. So what we've really focused on in the last four years is modeling and ensuring that we have an inc incredibly tight handle on, um, on the revenues that are coming in and the expenses that are going out annually so that we are very confident that, it, that in fiscal year 24, we will be able to fully retire that debt. And then that increment will come back into both the city coffers and the state education fund. Because right now we are one of the few TIF districts in the state that gets to retain 98% um, of the education increment as well. Um, so we are, we are on track to do that. We are currently working on our lot 7D project. That's the final um, significant parcel that the city owns and controls um, as part of the TIF district that we are looking to redevelop. Um, as the community probably knows, we have identified Netty Real Estate as our development partner and are working on bringing um, likely a hotel and housing to that site with some public parking. Um, a benefit of that project already is that um, when that when the proposal for that project first came in, uh, VEIC, Vermont Energy Efficiency Corporation, many of who, whose employees live here in Winooski, uh, was slated to go into that location um, as their headquarters. And we were really excited about that, a great new employer in Winooski, lots of, well, of good paying jobs, um, and a really vibrant partner in some of our energy priorities in the city. Um, so while they are no longer committed to going into the 7D project, they actually just signed a long-term lease for to locate their headquarters in the Champlain Mill. So win already of 7D is that VEIC's headquarters will now be in Winooski um, for the foreseeable future. Another big um, TIF-related business change that happened relatively recently that's um, maybe been a little quiet because of COVID is Vermont Public Television located their headquarters to our TIF district as well. Um, that's in addition to VSAC and CCV, uh, Marathon Health and PCC in the mill. We have a lot of great, um, great kind of anchor employer tenants uh, downtown that you know, provide those jobs, provide uh, vibrancy to the downtown business community, the restaurants and the bars, um, and I think really will solidify the future of our downtown and make sure our TIF district um, retires successfully in 2024. It is really exciting to be at this end of the TIF district. You know, we're working towards that benefit that voters supported that big investment for at the beginning. Um, and I'm pleased that you'll still be around to see that as you continue to reside in Winooski. Yes, absolutely. Um, what, one more thing that I wanted to call out specifically about that I've seen in your time in this position is, I think you've done a really great job of building more relationships and partnerships, you know, between the school, um, neighboring communities working on regional issues, um, service providers right here in Winooski, like USCRI and the Association of Africans Living in Vermont. I think like that ability to build those relationships and then leverage each other's resources instead of trying to recreate work or work in silos is really important to you know, successful service to our community. Um, and I'd love to hear about your focus on that and, and how you feel about some of that relationship building you've done. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, those for any leader, those relationships are just key. And I think especially in Vermont and in this part of Chittenden County, um, you know, our residents are the same. It's not, it's, 
you know, we have 72 to 7,500 residents. We'll see what happens as the census numbers come out. Um, and, you know, folks don't always think about, are they, if they're coming to, you know, Meal Bar for a drink or they're going up to Landry to play softball, you know, are you in New Scare, are you in Colchester, are you in Burlington, are you in South Burlington? I think people know that, but they don't necessarily think about the governance differences um, in those communities. And so I think the more we can um, partner with our surrounding municipalities, as well as those service organizations, and efficiently provide services to our residents, the better. Because again, the residents aren't necessarily thinking about those, those organizational lines. Um, and residents are involved in, with lots of organizations beyond just municipal government. Um, you know, folks send their kids to school and get services from, you know, the US Committee on Refugees and Immigrants and ALV and the Howard Center and Spectrum and Centerpoint. You know, the more we as, as organizations can minimize the bureaucratic barriers between our organizations, our residents will be better served and will be better served as efficiently as possible. Um, I think COVID, you know, you and I have worked so closely with so many of those partners through COVID, and we've really seen the success of those close partnerships, that constant communication with our partners to make sure that we all are have the same information, we know who needs help and when, we know what kind of help they need, and we're able to provide that really quickly. Um, and we couldn't do, as a small municipality, we cannot do that alone. We need our service providers to partner with us in that work. Um, so I think those, I think those relationships are at the core of um, creating that safe, healthy, and connected community that we aim to provide. Um, plus, they're just amazing, you know, individuals running those organizations, and the privilege of being able to, you know, learn from Amila and learn from Jacob and Thato at ALV, and learn from Deke at WHA, and learn from Sean at the school district. Um, they're just wonderful humans who are so committed to our neighbors and. Um, it's really been a privilege to get to know them. And I'm sure those connections are not just with me. You know, you have those connections and our leadership team here in Winooski has those connections. The new city manager will, will build those connections as well. Um, that, is, that is not a me specific thing. That is the, the culture we have in Winooski to kind of wrap support around all of our neighbors. Yeah, I think it's, I always hear from from folks like I love it here because it feels big and small at the same time. Like I know my neighbors, I can feel connected to the community, and I, I think it is that we want to get to know each other, we want to work together. Um, and you mentioned during COVID, like those relationships have been absolutely critical to the way we've been able to respond and, mm -hmm. and support the community. Um, and we'll obviously be fostering those to continue when we hire our, our next city manager. I also, I think the, the regional work is important on, a, on another level as well. When we think about like finding efficiencies and providing the best services we can, you know, voters supported a couple, couple town meeting days ago, um, moving into this regional dispatch scenario where mm -hmm we would combine across Chittenden County instead of providing our own dispatch services, um, trying to regionalize that. That's something you've been working on for a while. Uh, hasn't, we're not quite at the launch point yet. Um, but I think that is, is really important. You know, the collaboration with Burlington and South Burlington on addressing airport noise issues. Um, th there's a lot that we have across the community that we can work on together. And I, I'm grateful that I'll actually continue to get to work with you in your next role as we continue exploring these other partnerships. So two funny operational points on, on the importance of that regionalization. You know, go, moving towards Channing County Public Safety Authority's regionalization of dispatch is absolutely essential. One of the things that keeps me up at night, and I think residents may not know this, is our dispatch center here at the police department we run that dispatch center with one staff person on 24 seven, which means that one staff person, if there's a big inter crash on the interstate or there are multiple fire calls going on at once is really busy and really um, 
a lot of pressure on them all at the same time with often a life or death situation. Um, so thinking about how regionally we could provide better service and back up calls more effectively, I think is really important for those, quite frankly, those worst moments of our neighbors' lives when they need police or fire or EMS to respond really quickly. Um, a funny story on that regionalization, um, and I'm, I'm not gonna get the names correctly, but um, probably about two years ago, there was, folks may remember, there was a fire up at UVM in one of the buildings that was kind of in the middle of campus. And it was a big enough fire that it was a multiple alarm fire, meaning that fire departments from a number of different uh, communities were called in to respond to the fire. Mutual aid, we do it all the time. So the big Burlington trucks arrived and the big South Burlington trucks arrived um, and Winooski arrived and we have a much smaller truck. Um, and the where the, the truck needed to set up to effectively reach the fire, the big trucks couldn't get there, but our little Winooski truck could get right in there um, and help put out the fire. And I think that, you know, thinking about that network of assets that we have as a community, everyone may not need the same size ladder truck if we have one in Burlington, South Burlington. How do we use that network of, you know, assets that are over mil, you know, $1.5 million to buy a new fire truck. How do we best leverage those assets as a region, I think is um, a really interesting conversation. And we had that, we had, you know, proof positive of why that is important uh, a couple of years ago at that, when you, at that uh, UVM fire. That's such a, it's like the little engine that could. Yeah, exactly. I love that story. <laughs> um, Jesse, do you wanna share you know, like what you're most proud of during your time serving in this role? Um, oh, what I'm most proud of. Um, you know, I think we talked earlier about the master plan and the alignment of the commissions to that structure and our shared work plan between staff and council. You know, I, I know it's really wonky and, and dorky, but those structures, those structures that we built together between um, staff and the council, I'm I'm really proud of that. And I think it, it let us leverage a very small team to do a lot of really important things in the community's vision. Um, I'm also incredibly proud of some of the hires we have made in the last couple of years. Um, again, that's not necessarily always publicly seen, but um, during my tenure here, I've brought on five new department heads um, or promoted them to their current positions. And they're really just an exceptional group of experts in their field, um, of professionals, of folks who care about Winooski and care about the residents. Um, and they're the ones who you know, are dealing with um, the water breaks in the middle of the night or responding to the fire calls or um, and deal, dealing with employees' benefits and pay and making sure that they are, their families are taken care of so they can take care of the community. You know, the, the professionals that we have on the leadership team are just exceptional and are so well poised to um, not only carry through this interim phase, but also um, carry the city through the next five or 10 years. Um, I know the new city manager will come on and, and add to that value and make it even stronger, but I think this team is what I'm most proud of, this staff team. I can say as an elected official, this is not my, my professional career, right? A lot of folks, residents, you come into this, um, into these service positions without necessarily having a municipal background or a government background. And those structures that we have, the staff that we have, so much great support to help um, somebody come into one of these roles and just take off and, and help move things forward. Mm -hmm. um, looking out into the future, what are you looking forward to seeing us achieve in the coming years? Mm. Well, I think, um, so two things I'm really excited about watching in the upcoming years. Um, one obviously is the completion of the TIF district and what that means for our community and what resources, what new resources that bring um, to enable us to do the work of the community. And those community conversations about our values, how we want to spend those funds, what we want to do with those funds, how we invest in ourselves or invest back in our taxpayers, you know, those are going to be really rich community conversations. And I'm excited to see how those go. 
Um, the other thing I'm really excited about that we haven't talked about much yet today is um, you know, right through this wall right now is our fabulous new equity director, Yasmin Gordon. Uh, she's amazing um, and comes to us fully grant funded through a uh, grant with the uh, Boston Fed. Um, she'll, that, that position is funded for the next three years and we have a sustainability plan of how to fund it beyond that. But thinking about um, undoing the structural racism that does exist in our community and in our systems and bringing more voices to the table and ensuring that policy decisions in Winooski are really made um, with all voices taken into consideration that our leadership team looks like our community, that our council and our commissions look like our community. I think that's going to be really exciting work. We've had a lot of wins in that already. You know, I think back to, um, the equity summit we held in 2019 and those 60 people in that room for that day, which now seem so foreign and I hope we get back to a place where we can do that. Um, but listening to the students and the wisdom they brought to the table. Um, you know, I think that we've done a lot of work and we're ahead of the game in a lot of things, trying to keep up with the school district, of course, who's really ahead of the game. Um, but really making sure that we are, our organization is seen as open and welcoming and accessible to all. Um, I think will be just so exciting to watch. We'll, you know, we'll see that increase probably, hopefully momentarily when the um, legislature finally, finally passes our charter change, allowing all residents to vote in Winooski. You know, I think we see things opening up to, to be a more equitable community. Um, and I think that that work will continue um, and really thrive in the next, uh, you know, three to five years under Yasmin's leadership and your leadership and, and the staff team. That is a really great place to end, Jesse, looking towards the future and um, efforts that you have been integral to supporting. So thank you for taking the time to share with us on your way out. Um, really, it's it's just been a pleasure to work with you and I'm grateful for the, the time and dedication you've given to our city um, and that we'll still have you around as a, as a resource, as a resident. Um, so, just want to thank you for your time in the world of Winooski. Well, thank you. And I hope folks understand how much time you give to this position and the, you know, the leadership and the guidance you show to staff, to me and to staff as a whole. Um, you have just been an outstanding mayor and I know you will do great things uh, for the future of Winooski. So thank you as well. And thank you for your time today. Thank you.